Hello and thanks for joining us. Today we're heading to Berlin for the International Film Festival, which has just wrapped up. And a French movie, partly filmed here in the France 24 buildings, won big. Claire Denis was named Best Director for Both Sides of the Blade, starring Juliette Binoche as a woman torn between two lovers in pandemic-era Paris. She plays Sarah, a journalist who works at our sister radio station, RFI. I chose to tell a story with Vincent Landon and Juliette Binoche. That's it. It's the actors who direct me in the films. It's not me who directs them. Quelqu'un que j'ai beaucoup aimé, François, tu le sais. Ah, ça, ça me ferait peut-être bizarre de le revoir parce que quand on a aimé quelqu'un, ça, ça disparaît jamais complètement. Now, Claire Denis was one of seven women in competition at the festival, which ranks with Cannes and Venice among the world's top cinema showcases. Let's cross now to film critic Emma Jones, who's in Berlin. Hello, Emma. Now, are you happy with this year's winners? It was a great year for the women and for that reason, overall, I am really, really happy because all the main prizes bar one in the international competition, they all went to women. The Golden Bear went to a Spanish film, Al Caras, by Carla Simon, and that's only her second feature. And this was a fantastic drama about a Catalan family having struggles with the land. Now, best overall performance also went to, um, to a woman, a German-Turkish comedian, and she has the leading role in Rabbi Kumitz versus George W. Bush, which is a drama inspired by the real-life events of a mother trying to free her son from Guantanamo Bay. But it's done very comically as well, and I think we could do with a lot of laughs this year after two years of the pandemic, and I was delighted that that one won. And the French actress Isabelle Huppert received a Lifetime Achievement Award. This year's lineup was packed with French films, wasn't it? Yes, really. And you can kind of see why, because, of course, with all the travel restrictions, it was very European film heavy. Uh, one of my favourite films uh, at the festival was a film called Passengers of the Night, directed by Mikhail Hurst and starring Charlotte Gainsbourg. And this is a delightful little film set in Paris. Nothing much really happens, to be honest with you. It's about a woman called Elizabeth getting over a divorce, her children are leaving home, and it's just about how she moves on with her life. But it's played brilliantly by Gainsbourg, I feel. Now, I really love the setting. It's the 1980s in Paris. And Mikhail Hurst has been speaking a lot about why that was important to him. I felt like diving back into a previous period, the time of my childhood and youth, and to capture something of that time, its sounds, its colors. Et dans votre lettre que vous êtes prête à faire un peu de tout. Oui, au besoin. Le standard, par exemple, ça vous intéresserait Le standard Le standard téléphonique. Francis va bientôt nous quitter et on cherche quelqu'un. Je vais vous le présenter, il vous expliquera tout. Et puis, euh, on va essayer. Et puis si ça va, ça va, puis si ça va pas, ça va pas. Okay. Another powerful film was One Year, One Night, and that's uh, directed by a Spaniard, but starring uh, French actress Naomi Merlon. And this is based on a true story of how a couple survived the Bataclan attacks in Paris those years ago. It's based upon their, their recollections. Now, there are scenes in the film which are incredibly harrowing, of, of what happened in the Bataclan. Um, but Nomi Merlin has defended those, those scenes. They're not exploitative, I have to say, and she feels that they are necessary, and it was necessary to make this film at some point too. I think it's an important film. We have a duty to remember. It's a necessary sharing of experiences of those who survived the attacks and who need to tell their story. Some of the survivors feel the need to listen, to share of their trauma. Some are not ready to see this film, some feel the need to see the film, 
so I think it was important to make it. So that was from One Year, One Night, starring the French actress Naomi Merlon. Now, the festival pressed ahead in person, but the coronavirus did end up having an impact on some of the proceedings. How did it compare to previous years? Uh, well, it's not the Berlinale that we've been to before COVID-19, for example. And because it's been held in the middle of winter as the virus has been peaking here in Germany, it didn't really have the same feel as Cannes last year or, or Venice, for that matter. But the festival were determined to go ahead. Um, it hasn't been a festival, if you think of it, as people coming together to meet each other, share their love of cinema. It's really been getting on with business. So in order to access the festival, the press had to test every single day. Of course, mask wearing. Uh, was necessary. Um, there was social distancing in cinemas and there were a few problems, there were a few technical problems, nothing very serious. But COVID-19 really did have an effect and I think it had an effect even on Isabelle Huppert who couldn't come here in person to collect her, her award because she tested positive for COVID. I think the main thing that we get out of this is I think that we can say that certainly if, if there's a virus peaking in a country, um, a festival can still go ahead. So I think the Berlinale will be happy uh, despite everything. It certainly sounds like it. The festival opened with um, a French film from François mm. Ozon. Um, let's take a quick look. Mon meilleur ami, dont j'ai fait le premier film il y a... Bonjour, monsieur. Appelez-moi Peter. Mmh. Je vous en prie, asseyez-vous. Euh, excusez le désordre. Ah, oh, ça ne me gêne pas. Café, thé, cognac Cognac, volontiers. Karl, cognac, toi aussi, Sido Non, je venais le matin. C'est drôle. Je vous imaginais plus âgé. Pourquoi plus âgé Quand on a autant de succès et qu'on est célèbre, d'habitude, les gens sont plus âgés. Je suis l'exception qui confirme la règle. <rire> Prost. There's certainly a lot of French language going on in Berlin this year. Peter von Kant is a gender flip remake of the 1972 classic Petra von Kant. Gender has been a big topic at this year's festival, Emma. Yes, as well as the Ozone film, which I really liked, actually. It had an outrageously flamboyant uh, performance there from Denis uh, Menoshe. Um, that it has been a big topic because Berlin uh, has been one of the first huge worldwide events to basically uh, give gender-neutral acting awards. It was the second year running, and as I think I mentioned, uh, Meltem Kaptan won uh, a German-Turkish actress. Now, she won for her performance, for best performance over Overall, and that's something that they're going to continue in future years. And Gender Identity was really a film of quite a few films in the sidebar competition, the pan panorama. I think the most prominent was an Italian film called Into My Name, and that was produced by the actor Elliot Page. And it looks at four people transitioning gender, and that seemed like quite an important documentary to mention this year. And there were a number of films that addressed issues surrounding women's bodies, whether it be pleasure or more sensitive topics like abortion. Yeah. Yes, um, we're starting to see the fruits of a lot more women getting to make their films or a lot more empowerment of actresses and their project. Now, um, Call Jane uh, is, is a film that first appeared at Sundance and it is about um, the Janes, which were a real female collective in 1960s America, who did provide safe abortions for women when it was still legal. It stars Sigourney Weaver. I think one of the most talked about films here starred Emma Thompson and it's a film called Good Luck to You, Leo Grande. And it's about a 60-year-old woman who hires a male escort fantastic performance from Emma Thompson and she talked very passionately here in Berlin about why she decided to bear herself well literally but also really make herself very very vulnerable as an actor for this project. We're not used to seeing untreated bodies on the screen we're only used to seeing bodies that have you know been trained it to out of all you know something that I knew that Nancy wouldn't go to the gym she would eat too many biscuits, you know, she would have a normal body <clears throat> of a 62-year-old woman who's had two children. Women have been brainwashed all our lives to hate our bodies. That's 
the fact of it. And um, everything that surrounds us is, <laughs> is, reminds us how imperfect we are and everything is wrong with us. Everything is wrong. Thank goodness for some normal bodies on screen, Emma. Now, just before we go, you're going to tell us about the lovely film Leonora yeah, sure. Adio from 90-year-old um, Paolo Taviani. Yeah, I really wanted to mention Paolo Taviani. He is 90. He was, of course, part of a, fil uh, a famous fraternal filmmaking duo. He lost his brother Vittorio at the age of 95, I think in 2018. And so this is one of his first films alone. And it's really a, a love letter to a long lost Sicilian poet, but it's dedicated to his brother Vittorio. And I think for such an important filmmaking duo, it's important to mark it. But also this marvellous, sparkling 90-year-old director still work working in Berlin this year. Really worth paying tribute to him. OK, well, we're going to leave you with that. Thank you so much, Emma Jones, for joining us from Berlin. Stay warm, stay safe. And for more arts and culture news, you can head to our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs>